live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host, John Troyer. Happy to welcome back to the program, it's been a couple of years, but Mark Baker, who is the Ubuntu Product Manager for OpenStack at Canonical, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome, it's a pleasure to be back on. All right, so uh, you said you, you've been coming to these shows for over six years now, yep. uh, you're, you sit on the OpenStack Foundation, When we've been talking this week, there, there's all that, you know, buzz and misinformation and, you know, uh, God, what, what does Snowden say this morning? It's like fear is one of the most powerful weapons out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes there's just misinformation out there. But uh, for you, you know, OpenStack today, uh, where you see it in general and uh, in, in your role with uh, Canonical? Sure, so um, OpenStack is, is one of the cornerstones of our business and it's certainly a, a big revenue generator for us. We continue to grow customers in that space and that mirrors what we see in the OpenStack community. So. Um, all of the numbers you will have seen in the OpenStack uh, survey show that adoption continues to grow. And sure, there is, um, I don't know if I want to call it fake news out there, but there's definitely <laughs> um, memes going that, okay, OpenStack is, is, is perhaps declining in popularity. That's not what we see in adoption. We see adoption continuing to grow, more customers coming onto the platform, more revenues coming from those customers. Yeah, Mark, any data you can share? We did have, uh, we had Heidi Joy on from, from the foundation to talk about the survey. Uh, I mean, big you know, adoption, over 74% of deployments are outside of the US. Uh, mm -hmm. We talked to Mark and Jonathan this morning, they said, well, that's where more than 74% of the population of the world lives outside of the US. Um, any trends or data points specifically about Ubuntu customers too? Sure, so we, I mean, we definitely have big customers outside of the US. Um, um, you look at uh, perhaps one of our best well-known is, is Deutsche Telekom, obviously a, a global telco that's situated in Europe that's deploying OpenStack, really at the, the core of their network. Um, and that's going in, into multiple countries and we see not only more customers but also those existing customers growing their estate. Um, we've got other engagements as well in the Nordics uh, with Tele2, another telco that, that has a large estate too um, and increasingly out in, in, in Asia too. So, we definitely see this as being a, a, a global trend towards adoption. All right, and, and Mark, there was, you know, for years it was, okay, how many distributions are there out there? How many do we need on, out there? Uh, why do customers turn to Ubuntu when they want OpenStack? So, the challenge of operating infrastructure at scale is not can I deploy it. Um, it's not so much even, you know, how performant is it? It's really kind of boils down to economics, and a large part of that economics is um, how are you able to operate that cloud efficiently? And we've proven time and time again that a lot of the work that we've put in since the very beginning around tooling and around operations is what allows people to stand up these clouds, operate them at scale, upgrade them, apply patches, do all of those things, but operate them efficiently at scale uh, without having to scale the number of staff they require to operate that cloud. Yeah, I, I think back to the, the the stat that's been around for at least 15 years is companies spend 70 or 80 percent or even more of their budget mm -hmm. on keeping the lights on. You know, right. running around the data center, doing that. Um, anything you could tell us about you know OpenStack and and, and how that shifts uh, the, those economics for uh, you know the data center? Sure. So OpenStack has has gone through a typical sort of evolution that many technologies go through. And, and if we liken it to Linux, obviously we are a, a, a Linux company. Uh, in the beginning with Linux, many people would build their own distributions, they'd compile their own kernels, they'd make modifications, and, and a lot of the big lighthouse users of OpenStack went through that process. We are seeing the adoption changing now, and so um, people are coming to companies like us with an OpenStack distribution that's off the shelf, ready and packaged with reference architectures, proven methodologies for implementing this successfully and consuming it much more like that. Um, without that package, this free software can actually be very expensive to operate. And so you have to get, getting those economics right comes from ha uh, having those packages for people to be able to deploy, manage it and scale it efficiently on site. So, you've been involved with OpenStack mm -hmm. throughout the whole evolution. Is there anything you see now in 2017 at this summit? This is my first summit. I'm very impressed 
as an outsider, again, we, we started off talking about what you hear from the outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking to people here at the show, people standing up their very first clouds this yep. year, um, very bullish, very kind of uh, conscious of, of okay, this is a this is not a winner take all world. There's a there's a place for OpenStack yep. uh, that's that's actually very kind of clear and very uh, well fit. Do you see a difference in the customers that are you're working with now in 2017, their maturity level, their expectations, mm-hmm. than perhaps you did a few years ago? So yes, certainly um, customers have complex and diverse requirements. And so they want to deliver different styles of applications in different ways. And OpenStack is a great way of delivering machines, whether it's virtual machines or container machines, uh, to applications and provides a very robust and uh, agile environment for doing that. But other styles of application may require to run natively on bare metal. OpenStack can do some of that and do a lot of that. Um, but we're seeing, certainly seeing customers understanding, okay, OpenStack has a role, public cloud has a role, uh, container technologies have a role. A lot of these intersect together. Um, and the, it's really our uh, objective is to help them, whether they're choosing container platforms and OpenStack, uh, whether they're using public cloud, to ensure that they're able to manage this in an efficient way to deliver value to their business. You talked about uh, operability. We talked mm-hmm. with Mark Shuttleworth. Uh, he was also, t- uh, you know, we were remarking that you know Ubuntu, uh, the operating system, mm-hmm. is by far you know the the, the majority choice uh, yep. in in OpenStack and in a lot of the, a lot of cloud projects. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about operability? Um, the, again, the traditional dig from outside the project a few years ago, science project, hard to use, need mm-hmm. to have computer scientists to even get it running, which as a former Linux person myself, I, th- I find that a little bit insulting. It's not that, you know, it's, not, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's rocket science, but it's not that, it's not that complicated. The NASA guys were involved at the beginning. That is, yeah. that is true. <laughs> but uh, can, can you just talk a little bit about operability uh, in terms of, uh, again, what you're seeing in terms of either private cloud or, or mm-hmm. uh, people standing up, the, the operations team needed, the, the maintainability, day, day two operations, yep. that sort of thing, in a modern OpenStack environment? Yeah, so um, OpenStack is becoming, certainly in a lot of the enterprise customers that we're working with now, is becoming another platform that will sit alongside their VMware. There may be some intersection of that. Um, Our goal is to have common operations, so if I want to deploy applications into containers, I could do that into Kubernetes, uh, just running on VMware, I could do that uh, on OpenStack, I could do it in public cloud, to have common tooling and common operations across as much of the estate as we can, because that's where I'll get efficiencies, it's where I'll get smart economics and smart operations. And so, um, we're definitely, people people are looking for those solutions. They know they're going to have diverse environments. They're looking for commonality that runs across those diverse environments. And Ubuntu provides a great deal of commonality across them. Mark, can you speak to Canonical's uh, involvement in some of the projects? Uh, I I know you have a lot of contributors, but Mm -hmm. where particularly uh, does does your company spend the most focus? So, um, OpenStack, the initial challenge with OpenStack was to deliver capability and functionality. And Canonical was one of those contributors in the early days that was helping drive new features, helping drive uh, uh, new capabilities in OpenStack. Um, more or lessly, we've switched to addressing that operations problem. There are many clouds out there that are stuck on older versions. And for OpenStack to succeed as it, as it moves forward, we need to be able to show you can upgrade gracefully without service interruption. And we're demonstrating that with customers. So a lot of the work that we've been doing is how we streamline these operations, how we crowdsource, if you like, best practice for operating these clouds at scale to deliver uh, efficient value to the business. Uh, another interesting conversation here at the show has been about containers. Yeah. Um, both Kubernetes um, and I know you know Canonical have been involved with uh, with, with LXD at Lex- mm-hmm. yeah, and so can you talk a little bit about the the inter the interrelation of containers with the with OpenStack and and how you're seeing that play out? Yes, absolutely. So containers is all over OpenStack. Um, we we do smile somewhat when people talk about. Containers being a new thing with OpenStack, as, as we've been deploying OpenStack inside LXE, LXD containers um, for several years now. And so many of our customers are running containerized OpenStack today in production. Um, but there's, there's certainly you know, this great intersection of that, running Kubernetes on top of OpenStack, for example, we're seeing a lot of interest in that. Um, we deploy, as I say, our OpenStack services in containers to give flexibility of, around architecture choices. Um, 
and we're very happy to run Canonical's distribution of Kubernetes inside of OpenStack, uh, which we you know which we do and and say have customers doing that. So um, there are also people looking at how you can containerize control plane in other ways. We're certainly keeping tabs on that and uh, and and you know exploring that with some customers. Um, but containers are all across the OpenStack ecosystem. But they're not competitive. They're very much sort of building a higher level of value for, for customers so they have choice in, in how they deploy their applications. All right. Mark, anything new this week uh, surprised you or any you know interesting conversations that you'd want to share? So I came into this uh, knowing that there was going to be a lot of discussion around containerized applications in OpenStack uh, and containers perhaps on the, on the control plane. The thing that... Um, has surprised me actually has been uh, the speed with which people are looking at OpenStack for edge cloud. And cloud on the edge, this is it's kind of a telco thing, but cloud on the edge is how I can deliver um, capabilities and services, infrastructure services, in an environment, you know, in a, in a mobile environment, it could be attached to a cell phone mast, for example. It's not a traditional big data center but you need to deliver content and data out to mobile devices. And so there's a lot of discussion, especially say, within the telco community at, here at OpenStack Summit, about how OpenStack can deliver those kinds of capabilities on the edge. And that's, that's been interesting and, and, a, and a surprise for me to see how quickly it's come up. All right, Mark, I want to give you the final word as to you know, what you want people to, taking away uh, mm -hmm. of uh, you know, Ubuntu's participation in OpenStack. Well, some of this talk about OpenStack, you know, as it as it had its day in the sun, as, as are other things now taking over. Um, you need to. I think people out there will need to understand that OpenStack is deeply embedded inside big companies like AT and T and like Deutsche Telekom, and it's going to be there for a decade or more, right? And so OpenStack is definitely here to stay. We continue to see our business growing. The number of uh, customers Canonical is is working with deploying OpenStack continues to grow. Um, Ubuntu as a platform for OpenStack continues to grow. So it's definitely going to be part of the uh, infrastructure uh, as we roll forward. And yes, you'll see it working more in conjunction with those container technologies and application platforms, PaaS is, for example. Um, but it's here. It's just no longer quite the bright, new, shiny thing it used to be. It's kind of getting to be part of regular infrastructure. All right, well, Mark, not everything could be as bright as shiny as the uh, you know, uh, Ubuntu orange shirt. So thank you so much for joining us uh, again. And we'll be back with more coverage here from Boston, Massachusetts. You're watching theCUBE.